close your eyes and just start breathing into your heart space and feel your heart space. Feel the quality of your heart today. Check what's happening in your heart today. Is it calm? Is it nervous? Is it peaceful? Just be with everything that arises in your heart at this moment. And when you feel that, bring breathing golden light into your heart space and just feel your whole your whole heart with this golden light and observe what's happening in your heart when you do that. And now expand this light into all of your body, breathing into it and expanding and then into your energy field. And into this space, I am inviting the fullness of your being to be present here. All of the parts of you to be present here and now. May they all arrive here safely and gently. Thank you. Great mystery for this moment. Thank you for bringing all of us here together in this circle. May we flow together for the next hour, hour and a half. In beauty, in love, in connection, in truth, in integrity. I am grateful for this family and this opportunity to share. And I invite all the beings that are here to support us, all of those that want to be present and that serve us. So take one more deeper breath and whenever you are ready, open your eyes. And welcome to this space. So I would like to introduce Liam Edwards. We've known each other for quite a while, for like 12 years, I want to say, 11 or 12. And Liam calls herself a tea lady. And I love that because you go and have a tea with Liam and the magic happens. You sit in a circle with Liam to have a tea and it unfolds into this like galactic cosmic journey almost each time. Um, she's a woman that each time when I am in Leanne's presence, I can feel everything that's not aligned in me. So I believe that she's bringing that gift to everybody that she's meeting with, that people get into her energy field and they just feel what's not true, what's not aligned, and they get aligned by just being in her presence. And I am super grateful to, to know you, Leanne, and to walk with you this path and for all of your gifts. Um, you've been doing the sessions, I, sometimes I call you an operating system because that's how it feels, like you are just there to align everything into the greatest expression, the most coherent field. And in the past, when I was a teenager, I was reading these books about shamans who travel around the world and they align power places and sacred places. And um, I thought it was just like a tale. And then I met you. 
and it feels like you are one of those people that holds the balance of this universe it really feels like that and sometimes you tell me stories I have no idea what you say to me but there's truth in them and I trust them and then after many years I get to that point and it's like oh that's what she meant so yeah and I'm really grateful that you took this invitation today and it was just spontaneous like yeah let's do an interview there is something that needs to be said and our interview was going to happen a month ago and then this big thing happened that I hope you are going to talk about. And we are here today. So, yeah, thank you for being here, Leanne. And thank you, all of you, for being here today. I'm really grateful to see so many faces I, I know and I miss. And I miss hearts, probably, and souls more than faces. But, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I pass it to you, Leanne. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. Dzień dobry, Poland. Hello, good morning, good evening, everyone else around the world. It's a pleasure and a gift to be here. And I just want to take a moment to honor Kasia, this invitation to be here, and also the first invitation that took me out into the world. which was 12 years ago with Grandmother's Circle, the Earth Foundation, when I first came to Poland. And although I came on the invitation of the grandmothers, it was Kasia that then invited me to start sharing my gifts in Poland. So thank you, dear sister. You have been an inspiration to me for that long. Mm. The openness of your heart and the capacity of your service and the way you walked without fear at that time was truly inspiring. And I'll never forget the fire ceremony we did on the Schlinger mountain uh, Mayan fire ceremony, and 600 people climbed the mountain for that. And I remember you in the center of a ring of 600 people opening the space. And it was, and continues to be a great inspiration to realize that anything is possible. So very grateful to be on this journey because in a way, this is the first for both of us to join together and share in this space. So thank you all for joining us. And what I'd love to do first is just take a moment that each one of us can honor the space, the sacred space where our home is for the moment and the land upon which we stand right now. For me, I have a great love, honor, and respect for Dragonfly Village in Ubud, Bali, in Indonesia, which is my home of this moment, and it's where I am coming from today to share with you. So just taking a moment to honor your land, your earth, and your body for being here. For when we join together in these ways with this technology, so much can be shared, so much beyond the words that are spoken here today. And for all those stories that are cosmic and galactic, it's perhaps why today's journey is all about embodiment and earth changes. Because our embodiment is the key and the very foundation 
of our capacity to walk with ease and grace during these times of change. And speaking of change, often people come to me saying that they really want to change. And the question I ask them is, but are you ready to change the way you're walking in the world? Because wanting change and actually be willing to change don't always come together in people at first. They want change, but they want to stay things to stay the same. It's natural of our human nature to gravitate towards our comfort zone. But very little growth happens in our comfort zone. Most growth happens outside of it. So our yeah. work today is really important. And speaking about comfort zone, I guess you were taken out of your comfort zone big time a month ago. <laughs> a day before our interview or two days. Yeah, um, my, I feel very uh, grateful and very mm, grateful and, and for the amount of guidance I get on where I need to be and for the amount of grace that my life usually unfolds with. And I've been living now in Bali, Indonesia for 11 months. I had five months based in outside of Ubud in Bali and five months based in Uluwatu in the south of Bali, which are two very different energetic centers, even though they are connected by a causeway to the same land. And my time in Uluwatu was just coming to completion. And we had hoped to have this meeting on the new moon in Aries, the new astrological year. And the big planetary work that had to happen on that point in Uluwatu, which is where the, the great dragon lines that run through our planet, the rainbow serpent runs through, had happened one week before on a, and was opening a gateway. And the next piece happened the next Wednesday and that was on the beach and I was complete. And it just so happened that when I was riding my motorbike home at sunset, just very close to home. It's only five minutes from the beach to home where I was staying then. Very quiet road, nothing on it. Very dense bush, very narrow. And a dog came out in front of my motorbike. And that's the only memory I have until I was picked up off the ground maybe some 20, 25, 30 minutes later by the guy I rented the motorbike off. And I'd been unconscious for that period of time. And I was very grateful. I was on my rental motorbike. His number was there. And I was taken back to the place that where I was based. And I spent the evening tidying up the scrapes and the cuts and the bruises on my body. And then made sure I went to the hospital the next day for x-rays and CT. And what had happened was I had the points of impact where I had fractured my skull, I'd fractured my cheekbone, and I'd fractured my right collarbone. And when this was revealed to me, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. And the first thing I asked is, you know, what are the lessons? And I got very clearly, these are, these are going to be great gifts. Those three points of impact that I'd fractured were actually the only three points in my body I was still experiencing blocked energy. So even all the work I'd personally done, all the help I get when I can't work things out for myself and the body work I'd done, I hadn't managed to free up these three points in my body. And those were the points of impact. There was no damage to my motorbike. I must have been almost stopped, but I went onto my right side. So 
it was my choice how I managed that situation. The reason I wanted to share this with you is because you always have a choice. No matter what happens in your life, you always have a choice how you engage with it. We create our reality consciously or unconsciously. This is something I'd created unconsciously, but I could manage what I'd created unconsciously, consciously, if I chose to. And first of all, I'd been knocked unconscious. I had concussion. I had a huge <laughs> lump in my head, which disappeared the next day and my right eye went bright red. And my left brain had a hemorrhage. So there was a lot of pressure up here. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of discomfort in my body. And of course my shoulder and my right elbow weren't working either. But something in me, obviously my energy was low. Something inside said, go in. It's not about going out. I had no interest to tell anyone what had just happened to me. Firstly, because I didn't have energy myself. And secondly, I didn't want to engage in other people's perceptions and projections of the situation when I wanted to find clarity within myself. Why did this happen? What still needs to be resolved within myself? So I went in. My brain and body didn't work too well for a, at all for the first few days. And I was thinking, okay, my plan was to go out to the island. So let me just... Let me just see if I can get myself together enough to get out to the islands. But after four days, I started coming back to my body and the communication with my body came back online. And it was my body that said, you'll take care of your bees. You will have a data pack and you're going back to Ubud. See if Pei has a room at Dragonfly Village and you're going back there because you need to work with these specific practitioners osteopath, craniosacral technician, and a, and a body worker to get your body back integrated and, um, and you'll be okay. So I trusted that and I followed those instructions and went on a deep journey inside to unpack these pieces of my unconscious that I had not managed to unpack. But because of the accident, they were brought to the surface so I could see them a lot clearer. There were a few things from this life. Interestingly, right side of my body were to do with relationships. There was also sorcery on relationships through my mother's biological father's lineage in South Africa that had affected me that I hadn't been able to get. And then there were others in past lives and other dimensional realities. But there was a lot that had to come out of here in order for me to come back, not even come back, but come into a greater coherence, alignment and groundedness that is actually beyond what I experienced before the accident. So very much a thank you to all of you who had the patience to wait for us to meet for a month later. But I can assure you, I'm probably a lot more better at communicating now than I was then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you mentioned like clearing things from your, from this life, from past lives, from other dimensional fields. And I, I suppose it's probably deeper now, but that's what I did with you in my sessions with you, individual sessions many years ago. And you said that your sessions have changed now. And uh, yeah, I would like to know what's happening in them. I imagine something similar to what happened to you in your process, but can you say a little bit about that? Like, where do you lead people to and what? Um, I'd say the, some big shifts have happened over the last few years, but what's important uh, for everyone to know now is our new earth exists here and now. And it is possible for us to live 
in the new earth frequencies here and now. And where our embodiment and evolution was kind of step by step, stage by stage, process by process, up until the new earth architecture became available, it's actually a quantum leap into the new earth architecture that exists now. And it operates on a different frequency. So I'd say the way to give you an example of how it plays out in session work, we can achieve two to three times as much in half the time as we used to because we do no longer have to process it through the density of the physical and emotional body as with the way we used to. There is a complete new frequency available to us. What made the new earth architecture and this frequency available to us is actually the incoming souls. Many people refer to the incoming souls. They were back when they were crystal children, rainbow children, indigo children. I, I don't um, describe the children as that. They, they're simply incoming souls. And as the planet has been raising its vibration, the new ones have been able to enter fully intact. For us older models that entered 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago or more, the planetary field was denser as was our parents' energy bodies. So we were not able to land our full consciousness into body onto the earth at that time. The simple reason being, if we did, we would damage the, our physical vehicles that were more carbon-based at the time. So we've had to work at evolving our carbon-based vehicles into their crystalline structure as the Earth's been evolving. And what's happened is as humanity, those who have chosen to awaken, have awakened and raised their frequencies, they've been able to receive incoming souls of higher frequencies with greater embodiment. So I've been aware since the beginning of 2021 of the new what children that came in fully intact, fully knowing who they are, fully embodied in love, truth, transparency, and integrity, and fully into their earth vehicles. And by them landing fully into their earth vehicles, into our planet, it's anchored through the planet, the capacity for us to meet these incoming souls if we choose. Mm -hmm. And the frequency is so much higher that we can, if we can clear ourselves, ground and embody enough of ourselves to move into that frequency, we can live new earth now, regardless of what is playing out on the planetary field. So then how do we, older models, as you, as you said, <laughs> I think you used those words, they were so funny. How do we get there? Like, how do we reach that frequency and match that frequency? What does it take? Well, to, to understand what is informing us, consciously and unconsciously helps. So any trauma, conflict, or illness that we've experienced in this life, as long as accompanied by all the beliefs, thought forms, religious indoctrination, societal programming. This is all what is informing us through the current blueprint that we're in. So there is a need to resolve this, to clear it out. But the foundational piece that I work with everyone now who I'm working is, no matter what that is, our first piece we need to do is actually align through the bodies. And when I'm talking about aligning through the bodies, we're aligning through the physical body, our emotional body, our mind body or mental body, 
and our soul because that is our earth team and that team in that team there's actually no hierarchy and it's absolutely vital that that team is working together on the earth plane to support our journey and the absolute foundation stone of that earth team is unconditional love of self. We have to love ourselves enough that we will never compromise ourselves, our truth, our body or our emotions for what we know to be right again. And then once those bodies are aligned, we go aligned through the soul, higher self, and over soul. And then we actually align through the core of source in the heart of Gaia, where the new earth architecture emerges that is not outside of self, the core of source in our own heart space, and the core of source in the heart of the sun that is not outside of self. What you'll notice when I spoke that, if you're familiar with the previous alignments, if you've worked with me or others, it, we would always be dropping a cord into the heart of the earth or a cord up to the sun. It was outside of self. In the new earth architecture, there is nothing that is outside of self. And I notice when I'm sitting in the frequency of the new earth, that my breath is very similar to the breath of an elephant or the heartbeat of the earth. It's about six to eight times a minute. The oxygen that I'm breathing, regardless of my environment, is very high percentage oxygen. And my nervous system is completely relaxed. It operates on the parasympathetic nervous system. It cannot operate from the sympathetic nervous system, or I have not yet experienced a potential of operating in a new earth system from the sympathetic nervous system. It only operates in the parasympathetic and it operates outside of time. It's very much fully present in the now. Yeah, I remember many years ago when you said that uh, you are fully in love with yourself and that you are making love to the earth and that the earth is your greatest lover. And at that time I thought, oh my God, this is so amazing to be fully in love with yourself. It was so outside of my experience at that time. And then when I started to get into loving myself, I cannot say that I fully love myself but into loving myself I started to understand like how um, how it can be achieved and what it does to the system and then when we talked uh, about a week ago I was telling you that like I I have this love and I am on parasympathetic nervous system but quite often and especially in relationship close intimate relationship I go into sympathetic nervous system but it feels like now those programs and those patterns they are not anchored in me that's a strange feeling but they are outside of me like they are still it's like an old habit that's still trying to like get me and pull me into different directions but it feels like it's outside of me I don't know how to explain that but uh, like it's around me around my core around my being and it doesn't touch uh, me in the old way it feels a bit different but yes so just to speak into the nervous system because this is so important when regulating our nervous system actually is a difference between us really enjoying our human body for play for passion for pleasure for being here is, is so much more enjoyable when we're on our parasympathetic nervous system so just to give you all a brief understanding of this is to understand first of all the vagus nerve the vagus nerve is a very important nerve in our bodies when we are in utero at a, about 
10 months, we separate. We're like a little, little circle and we separate and one becomes our mouth, the other becomes our anus. And that's the pathway of the vagus nerve. And the pathway also runs from the mouth to the anus on woman, it also runs to the cervix. Now, understanding the, that that is very important nervous system for us. Also, that when we experience trauma, what happens is there's a junction in the nervous system that's kind of here in the solar plexus area. And if our animal body doesn't respond as a mammal will, it doesn't go into fight or flight, what happens then is our reptilian brain kicks in with the freeze response. When the freeze response happened and the vagus is locked, what it does is it disconnects us it disconnects us from there up. So most of humanity is living disconnected from the lower part of their body, their sexual organs, the earth, and only existing in this upper part of their bodies. So it's really very, very important to address this yourself and I what we'll do if you like is when we close for today we'll put on the event page a link to a video on the vagus nerve and I'll also include a link to TRE which is known as tension release exercise or trauma release exercises that were created by a Dr. David Pacelli who spent a lot of time working in refugee camps and war zones and when he was there, he would witness families coming in and that everyone was frozen. And after some time, he would notice the children shaking and shaking and shaking. And when the children stopped shaking, they went out and played. But the parents, they never shook. They stayed frozen, expressionless. So what Dr. David Pacelli's done is he's created a very simple sequence of exercises that you can do yourself at home to activate that trauma release in the body, which is very different than the Kundalini meditation. And, and open, basically it will release the trauma and open that junction again so that you can drop down and inhabit all of your body. Very, very, very important. Um, I had done a lot of personal work before I was fortunate to meet Dr. Dave Pacelli and had a session in his apartment in Phoenix. And I actually released, had an emotional release. And he was like, oh, are you okay? It's like, yes, I was so excited because I had had an emotional release from the process. So what I did is I, I did his exercises every day for a whole month and it made an incredible difference on my ability to live in a relaxed, open and expanded body. And it's from that space, we take a step from earth being mother to earth being lover. And we can really start to experience the beauty and the pleasure of being here in an animal body on the planet. Um. You were talking about being disconnected from the like lower part of our body and um, lower chakras. So can you talk a little bit about sexuality of the new earth? Just briefly. <laughs> I, I guess the first thing to talk about is sexuality. Um, if there is any shame, fear or guilt around our sexuality, then there's probably going to be contraction around our sexual centers and our sexuality. The other thing to know that's really important is that sexual energy 
and life force energy are one and the same. And in most indigenous cultures and languages, there are not different words to describe them. So for anyone who misuses or abuses their sexual energy, they're actually misusing or abusing or suppressing their life force energy. So coming into right relationship or sacred relationship with our sexuality and our own body is absolutely vital. And as far as what happens on the, in the new earth systems, as far as that, it's really what happens with everything in the new earth systems is everything must be natural and organic and therefore sustainable. So when it comes to anything around sexuality, it's slow down, be fully present with your earth team, your physical body, your emotional body, your mental body and your soul and feel your way forward. Because one thing I've experienced since really landing into my animal body is sex and sexuality is no longer focused on the genitals. It's focused all over and all through the physical and energetic body. And the more present we can be, the more sensitive we are, the more pleasure there is in everything with life. It's like making art of life and making love to life. So again, the choices that we make of what we ingest, be that foods, fluids, entertainment, digital devices, sound, Whatever we're ingesting affects our system, our sensitivity, our capacity for coherence and clarity. So it's time to make the choices of the environments that are going to most support you on your earth walk. Thank you. I know that you are sitting next to the bees right now, probably, I suppose, I imagine. <laughs> and uh, last time when we talked, you mentioned that the bees and their buzzing is the same sound as our heart chakra. That was truly amazing. Mm. Yeah, and I would like you to talk a little more about bees and that um, I would call it synarchy. Um, Richard Rapp from Gene Keys, he calls it synarchy, but that kind of um, field that they are creating where everyone knows their place and everyone is doing their, um, their work and, uh, and together they create this beauty and harmony. Yeah, so you, you know a lot about bees because you've been dancing with them. <laughs> so... I, I guess to put this in perspective with our embodiment, the earth changes, I look at us as we are in a system and we are the microcosm of the macrocosm. So I look at our human system as a personal and planetary, as a solar or soul, our galactic system and our universal system. So you could say, the most of us started as homo sapien as you connect to your soul you become homo luminous as you collect reconnect to your galactic self galactic levels and dimensions you become homo galacticus and next comes homo universalis so it's connecting to a part of you that already exists but with more coherence so that you can connect and experience that part of you down 
here on the earth plane. And the more we come into alignment and coherence and connection with a part of ourselves, the more ease and grace there is on the earth plane that you're not likely to get hooked up in the dramas that are unfolding. And there's a lot of drama unfolding on the planet right now. And what happened after I guess I'd been in Bali for a month or two is a friend invited me to one of the uh, sacred waters. Uh, for those of you who have been to Bali before or are thinking of coming here, it has extraordinarily powerful healing waters and healing waters and springs and temples where you can go through a cleansing and purification process. So he took me to Little Sabatu, which wasn't far from where I was living. And at the first altar, there was a, a local beehive. And I just asked my friend, you know, is this always been here? And he goes there a lot. He goes, I don't know. He hadn't noticed it. And then he mentioned there's a man, Jan, be, um, Bali bee man, who takes care of bees in Bali. And I said, I'd love to meet him. And eventually I got a contact and I invited him for tea. And we had this beautiful sharing of information. Jan was a waiter in a hotel and he wanted to spend more time with his son. So he left and he took care of bees and he's been self-taught for seven years of living and working with bees and trying to create awareness and protection for them in Bali, Indonesia. So this beautiful exchange happened and at the end of it, he said, is there anything you want from me? And I said, no, nothing. I just want to say thank you for sharing your time and having this exchange. And then I'm like, oh, is there anything you want from me? And Jan said, yes, I would like to set up a charity. And for those that aren't aware, I spent about ooh, a good eight years of my life working in conservation projects and charities and NGO work in Africa in my 30s. And at the time, I had a little bit more free time and I just thought, yeah, let me, uh, if I can help for the next few months or so, let me help. But little did I know that the bees had a greater plan. And I'd always had a curiosity about bees and a passion for bees. And I'd even done a beekeeping course uh, in New Zealand years ago. And I remember on that beekeeping course, when we went out to do the practical side of it, they gave us all these big spacesuits to put on to protect ourselves. And I tied my overalls around the waist, ready to go outside. And the organizer said, I'd feel more comfortable if you put that on. And I said, well, I'm actually more comfortable with it not. <laughs> so is it okay if I can go out like this? And we had a one hour practical with the bee. And I was in ecstasy for an hour with the bees there. But I didn't fully understand why. It was just me being my little earth, earthly self and loving earth. And this journey that the bees invited me on here in Bali seemed to be a whole lot bigger than my thought I'd just be helping out for a few months. Because of what the bees have to offer us on this journey of embodiment and evolution, they actually hold the templates for the Homo Universalis. Everything that they do, they do for everyone and everything. And they are so incredible and so incredibly conscious that where nature has been a, one of my greatest teachers my entire life, it's like these bees are teaching me to the next level. And let me introduce you to them and you can have a closer look at them before I speak anymore. These are my new housemates and teachers.
And the question that I get often asked most is, you know, don't they sting you? When, when I had my first bee family in Uluwatu, I think they, they lived above my fridge in the outside kitchen. And they stung me on the first day, right here. And when I asked them what the message was, they said, be present with us. And they're right, I was not present to them that morning. And that was the only time they ever stung me. And here at Dragonfly, Pei, the owner of Dragonfly, she's also vice chairwoman on, in our Be Life Global project. And she had bees here. And we went to check on how they were doing um, a couple of weeks after they arrived. And we we're out on behind her bedroom. And within a minute, Pei and I both got stung on this acupressure point. And the fact that we both got stung on the same acupressure point, I just looked at Pei and I said, that is not by chance. That is an initiation of sorts. They've both given us. And with this family of bees, just I think they'd been here two or three days and they stung me in two places. And one was right here and one was right there. And it's exactly the same acupressure point again. And I knew then that they have the consciousness to read your energy field, know where energy is blocked and address it. And as Kasha mentioned earlier, one of the greatest gifts is simply just living with them because the frequency of their hum is the same frequency as our anahata and our heart chakra. It's the frequency of love. So being in their field is such an incredible gift of love and of joy. An infusion of what we are becoming. And if you look back into the ancient history of humanity, you will find the bees have always been a very revered species. Whether you're looking at Egyptian hieroglyphics, there is a shamanic path of the bee, there is the path of pollen, and then there's the priestess of the Melissae, which were bee priestesses. The Oracle of Delphi was a bee priestess, and you'll often see uh, images of the Oracle of Delphi actually sitting on a beehive and being surrounded by bees. So, they are, they, some say that without bees, our planet would cease to exist as we know it within three years. And they have a lot of threats at the moment, but more importantly is how much, how m the gifts they have for us. So, so this um, is bees that's quite naturally and organically <laughs> opened in my life recently that I'm very grateful for. So you said that it's like the hum of our heart and it's love and joy. And the way I see it is that when each of us embodies that, when each of us gets into that self-love and joy, like the great joy, I would call that, then we just know our purpose and we're connected to the deepest, most divine part of ourselves. And then we just can be in the field together and there is coherence naturally. So it's all about just getting to the source of who we are, love and joy. And then we embody that, um, I don't know how to call that hive template, the template of the new earth. That's how I see it. And then we just dance together and it's effortless. So it's, uh, so the hierarchy becomes synarchy. It's just like the, the power is in each of us evenly and together we create this great dance of love and joy <laughs> um so can you speak a little more about the sound and the meaning of the sound and the song lines it's it's interesting just as you were sharing them what was coming into my awareness is our path our purpose for being here 
is embedded within our own sound, song, and soul. And this is why sound is so important in our evolutionary process. It's why each and every person's voice is so important. And your capacity to heal yourself with your own sound, song, soul signature is a potential that most people have never even explored. And it's something I'm obviously using more and more for myself and working with others because you can use your sound to unblock anything in your body that's blocked, physical, emotional, mental, to restore yourself to your true essence and know that your true essence is absolutely unique to you. Your own soul purpose is absolutely unique to this planet. We're here to support each other to find ourselves. And the beautiful thing, I'm just trying to think who I was working with or what I was watching the other day, a penny dropped for me. And this is, it's relative to our astrology and sound because each uh, planetary body as our earth and our sun has its own consciousness, they too have their own sounds and frequencies. So our unique soul song sound signature is directly correlated with our astrology and our astrological planetary alignment as we entered through and into the system. And it was like, wow. I can remember, I think I watched an hour and a half program and that was my little pot of gold that came out of it. So which really excites me because my favorite craniosacral practitioner here now in Bali that I'm working with also works with astrology and mythology. And his, the name of his work he was given was On the Soul's Terms. Our soul knows, so everything we need to know is within. So our healing journey is one of unpacking, offloading, releasing, letting go of all that is not ours so that we may come into harmonic with what is. When you were talking now about the sound and that we have this connection and that in the sound there is our purpose, uh, do you feel like that's the teaching of the whales? Of the sound and how we can use the sound? I would say the teaching of sound is a teaching of nature. The whales embody the oceanic consciousness or the cosmic consciousness when in my understanding when the earth fell into darkness when we became disconnected when the old firmament and old grid system collapsed when all the galactic gateways were closed and, and earth gateways were closed and we ended up in our 3d earth plane forgetting who we were and where we came from the whales did not forget the whales maintained their cosmic consciousness. Our cetacean nation maintained its cosmic consciousness. And in my recent experiences of scuba diving with the manta, manta rays here in Bali, I'd say the manta rays are also of galactic consciousness. So the whales could still receive and bring in the information through their bodies, through their physical and energetic bodies into the earth plane and make them available to us. The same way that incoming souls have made available the new earth architecture. That is a role of our citation nation. 
And um, it's been extraordinary. I've been very fortunate to crew on five uh, whale song experiential journeys with the whales in Harvey Bay, Australia, which is where the Antarctica humpbacks in wintertime in the south, this time of year, actually beginning of May, they came up out of Antarctica. They give birth to their babies in the Pacific Ocean. And then they bring them through Harvey Bay. If you look on the map, what Harvey Bay, it's a big crystalline sand peninsula. This is where they bring the babies to teach them what they need to know before they take them back into Antarctica in October, September, October time. And we noticed when we were, we had uh, hydrophones in the water recording live whale song and literally making music with them, that their whale song changed every year as the cosmic codes came through differently and updated every year. So they are an incredible species that if you ever get time to spend with, I highly recommend. It's life changing, mm -hmm. as Anna knows. Like uh, going back into the song, into the sound and the um, song lines, what came to me now is that when we like decode the sound in us and we get to that signature of our soul, the sound signature, that's when like the song lines are activated because it's like, foo, foo, foo. I just, I had just had this image. I don't know like how true it is, but when everybody gets connected to that, song inside to the sound of our soul that's how the song lines are recreated like the the web of it on the whole planet what what um in my experience so far that i we when we used to talk of the old world we talked of a grid system on the earth that know that the new earth system is very very different than the grid system of the old earth. The new earth system is much more fluid and flexible. And as our individual system comes into coherence of the new earth frequencies, and once we're embodied and we're living it, we become a pillar on the new earth, wherever we are. So then it's more fluid. When the old system used to be, this was the point on the planet, that was the sacred sites, that's where the gateways were. It's like in the new system, you become a galactic gateway. And this is why embodiment is such a vital key of our evolutionary process. The more we awaken, the more of a lighthouse we become. Actually, the more we are seen dimensionally, we have to be fully anchored through the physical and commanding our space in here with absolute discernment on who and what we allow through our space, physically and energetically. It's absolutely vital. So mastering discernment in this dimension, others is an absolute key to our embodiment and evolution. Mm -hmm. so you say that we become like the pillars and portals in a way then you said you mentioned that you are going to egypt uh, this year so what's the purpose of going to the sacred sites if we become sacred sites <laughs> that's a great big adventure into the unknown because I'm still being guided to show up with a group of individuals there. Um, I've got a very long relationship with Egypt in this timeline or others and others. And particularly since my awakening journey, Egypt has become very present. And so far, I've been guided to lead three different sacred journeys at different points, but all at the same time of year, which is quite interesting. The first one was very much Egypt of the Egyptian timelines. The second one, some few years later, was 
the Atlantean timelines of Egypt, as many of you know, the Egyptian temples were built on top of ancient Atlantean temples. And the guidance for the sacred journey I'm being guided to facilitate this year, beginning on 22 July, Mary Magdalene Feast Day, completing on 12 August full moon through the Lion's Gate. All I am aware of, it's directly related for reinstating our galactic blueprints. For our souls are of extraterrestrial nature in a terrestrial animal body. But the essence of our divine galactic blueprints, it's time for them to land. And this has been reflecting through many personal sessions of late when people are starting to collect with their galactic sisters and brothers and their galactic teams. And the galactics have the technology to land the systems of the new earth and we are here to implement these with our teams so, so there's the quantum leap into the galactic cosmos piece and i'm just wondering if we should see if anybody has any questions yes we should <laughs> you can type your questions in the chat box I see Halushka typing something. <laughs> Maybe she's just messaging a friend. Do you feel it is time to work with sound in Egypt? <laughs> when you feel it's time for you to work with sound in Egypt, Cosmic Cat, you should get there. <laughs> she added it always is <laughs> yeah so, sound um sound color and light frequency and energy is the language of our new earth so it's time for everyone to start thinking energy choosing frequency yeah so that's exactly the temple that i'm being guided to build it's the color sound frequency based yeah so cosmic cat is in egypt this year i can see that Okay, <laughs> no. there is a question. Will the recording of this meeting be available? Yes, it will be available. And Leanne, where can I hear you more? Soon, mm -hmm. Leanne is going to speak at a big international events and awaken <laughs> people. Yeah. <laughs> As an oracle sitting on a beehive. <laughs> Now, that would be very good for my ego. But the truth be known is we're sitting here together, you know, on 1st of May, which is Beltane in the Northern Hemisphere, Samhain in the Southern Hemisphere. So it's a time of introspection in the Southern Hemisphere, a time of going in a time of digesting your experiences of the past six months, a time of death and rebirth. While in the Northern Hemisphere, it's a time for planting. 
it's a time for planting seeds. And the specific astrology of this new moon in Taurus with the eclipse and the alignment of the planets is actually a time of calling forth your soul purpose. And as I'm saying this, thunder is just rolling through the valley in Bali where I'm staying. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's a time for you to set an intention and to call forth your soul purpose. And there's, um, there's a very simple mantra that I use every morning during my morning practice, which you may find supportive. When I'm aligning my bodies, my earth team and the new earth architecture structure. And I simply pull forth my highest possible soul destiny and service in right relationship to my physical body, my human experience in the essence of play, passion, and pleasure. And I'm not saying that's what you need to do, but find something that resonates for you. Highest possible soul destiny and service to person, people, and planet. And knowing that service starts with yourself first. I look at our system as a love tank. It's our responsibility to make sure our love tank is full so that it may overflow into everyone and everything it touches. If our love tank gets one millimeter below full, stop. Take your own responsibility there to top your tank up so it can overflow once again. Contrary to the way many of us were raised through our families and society, put yourself first in right relationship. Self-love comes first because from that fullness, you will overflow into everyone and everything. Thank you. So Pam said, no questions, but wow, I wanted to share. I also felt wise about three, four weeks ago and I was immediately asked to go into my body and get curious and it helped free up parts of my energy system I had been working with. That's well done. final break, breakthrough. Okay. Since December, this is Joanna. Since December, after very strong dream, not dream, rather experience. Mm, I have deep feeling that my bones are empty, like a bird. It's not negative, but but hmm, strange, and it's constant. Do you know something about such an experience? Empty bones. Perhaps go and do a little research on the bird tribes. Now, a question from Courtney. I had a question about how to stay balanced on this path in navigating life in the physical, especially in terms of sustaining myself and functioning in the 3D, while also staying in full alignment um, with my soul's purpose. Great question, Courtney. The first word you use, though, is balance. And if we think of balance, balance is static. And our environment is moving. So what we're searching for is not necessarily balance. It's we're searching for harmony. Remember, we're in an environment that's constantly changing and moving. So what we're looking for is to be in harmony with what is changing and moving. Okay. So the next thing is, is we are here to sync ourselves with nature, to sync ourselves, sync, synchronize ourselves with the source of creation. 
when we talk about when I use the words person and planet, I'm looking at this as our personal planet and we're on the greater planet. We are the microcosm of the macrocosm. So we are here with the same balance of elements as our planetary system. So same balance, I'll just use same percentage of elements with the planetary system. So for us to come into alignment and coherence with our soul and our earth team, we are also needing to sync ourselves with our planetary system. The planetary system cycles, really important. We need to remember what it is to cycle, whether we're cycling with the sun, whether this we're cycling with the moon. Because this has a direct effect on us. In the old world operating system, it's very linear and it has a complete disregard for cycles. As we become more attuned with our bodies, the wisdom of the body and the soul embodied, we realize that we're actually not designed to operate in that way. We are designed to operate on a more cyclic nature. And again, daily solar cycles, monthly lunar cycles, our quarterly solar planetary cycles. And then we've also got our, each planet has its own time of cycling five years, seven years, eight years. And then we've also got galactic cycles. So if we want to come into more coherence, we have to understand if we want to embody our galactic self, we need to understand our galactic cycles. And really important um, path I found for understanding our galactic cycles was with a Swedish brother, um, Carl Johan Kalaman, he's based in New Mexico, but he has probably got the most resonant and accurate translation of the Mayan calendar, the galactic calendar. So the new earth system is equivalent to operating in the ninth wave of the galactic calendar. While humanity, majority of humanity is still in polarity, is operating in the seventh wave of the galactic calendar. The ninth wave opened on the 31st of October 2011. So it's been open since then and available to us. And now we can live it. Most of humanity in polarity, the dramas playing out on the planet, are operating in the seventh wave still and Carl actually has a really affordable workshop coming up very soon if anybody is um, interesting into understanding that better so understanding our own body having co communication with our own body and soul and right relationship our earth team is step one I myself, before I did my sexual healing work and really anchored through my physical body, was definitely subscribed to the Love and Light Brigade. Everything was love and light. I could vision, channel, download information for everyone and as well as myself, but I couldn't manifest. I couldn't support myself because I hadn't done my sexual healing work, I hadn't really got real and I needed to ground more. And that was the key. My sexual healing was the key that enabled me to manifest and have greater coherence consistently. So hopefully that helps your question, Courtney. Thank you for coming today to share it. Thank you. Now there's a question from Tanna. I am connecting with sisters of Ukraine and they say they don't have a future. They are in despair. How can we support them? And what is perspective on this war which threatens life on earth? Thank you for your question, Tana. Most importantly, what that those women need are empowerment. 
Support to remember the power that they are, individually and collectively. They do not need to be a victim of what is playing out. It can be a pathway to their power. And I imagine, Tana, since we first met, you've done a lot of work with women and you would have the tools within yourself to support those women in their power. And if you choose that as your dharma, I wish you well on it. But it's a grand opportunity of empowerment. And that power through their unified field is priceless. I've always known, and I don't know how I knew, but I just had this knowing that thousands meditating on the planet makes a difference. But a few people fully coherent, aligned, embodied and connected as pillars of the new earth can actually implement greater change faster. So make your embodiment and evolution your focus. Your life will unfold accordingly to support that and to support you. Um, so this is not a question. It's a statement, I guess. I think it's, it's Monica. I think about etymology of word B. It sounds like longer version of a simple B. I've never noticed that, but when you talk, this thought kept biting me. Their name is like a mention for present. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's extraordinary. The bees, I guess because I'd worked in conservation before from the perception of rescuer. We're all familiar with the triangle of disempowerment. The victim, the persecutor and the rescuer which we will play out often as an individual, will play out in our intimate relationships, our family relationships, our business relationships. And the triangle of disempowerment has been used on a planetary level to colonize countries and continents. The Spanish invaded South America, pointed the fingers at the indigenous people and told them how useless they were, how backwards they were. So they were the persecutor, made the indigenous people the victims and then brought in the Catholic Church to be the rescuer, to cleanse them of their sins. So long as you're in the triangle of disempowerment, you're not in your power. So I'd come from conservation work with the perception of rescuer. So when I came to work with the bees, I knew that it couldn't be the same level of consciousness. It, working with the bees had to come from outside. We're not here to protect or to save the bees. We're here to co-create with them, to work with them. So rather than us saving the bees, we've actually brought the consciousness of the bees into the center of the project. And we're listening to the bees and implementing their guidance is to be life global. It's a completely different way of operating. And it's been extraordinary so far, and it's really just starting. Yeah. Yeah, okay, there's a question from Pam. Leanne, could you share more about how sexual healing can help ground and manifest empowered, effortless sustenance? Remember when I mentioned earlier, Pam, there is no separation between your sexual energy and life force energy. In most indigenous cultures, it's the same word. So if there is any shame, fear, guilt around your sexuality, use, misuse, abuse, or suppression of sexual energy, you're suppressing your life force energy. So when you can be relaxed in your body and open to the earth, 
you can also access an infinite potential of life force energy. And this is really something to be aware of or observe in your intimate relationships. If two people come into intimate relationship and neither are sourcing themselves, they'll often find it's there's a honeymoon period and it's a lot of love and joy and interaction at first. But when you create a closed energy system, it puts a limitation on potential. And you'll often find that energy will seesaw from one person to another, to the other, to the other. And then the consciousness of each person blends and people are trying to make the other a better version of themselves. And for people having that relationship, they'll often find that while they like what they see about each other, they often have the same shadows, which opens up a whole nother story and week long workshops you could do about relationshiping. So what I'm showing you is the importance it is to open your own pathways to source and come into your self-sourcing sovereignty. And it's still good, it's okay, it's wonderful to have intimate relationships, to open yourself fully and share yourself with another. Ideally, you want to have a good idea that they're commanding their space in their universe and you're commanding your space in yours. But after that, always come back into your own system. Really, really important. And it might be far beyond where a lot of people are right now, and that's okay. Because the best way we often learn is from our own experience. So be patient with yourselves as you make your choices, as you have your experiences, as you're learning your lessons which for most people, including myself, are coming thick and fast right now. It's true, yes. Those lessons are fast and everything is happening much faster right now. Okay, so I guess this is the last, yeah? Last question? Last question. Um, El Coyote, I suppose it's Wukash. Do you know why the bees keep coming on, on my garden and they just lie on the ground and don't move? Can I help or leave them in peace? Wow, what a gift. Why did the bees come and land on your garden? Oh, I've just been told it's not for me to answer. Go lie in the garden with your bees and ask. <laughs> Open your own dialogue with your bees. Open your own dialogue with nature. Become one with nature. For that is how we come home in these bodies on earth. Okay. <laughs> so I think we arrived at the end of our meeting together. Uh, would you like to add something, Leanne, before I close the space? I just want to thank you all. I feel a lot of love and gratitude for this opportunity on this invitation from Kasha to come and meet with you all and journey with you today. So I'm very grateful because without you, it would not be. So thank you and thank you to all of you who were unable to join us today or in this timeline who are going to check in later so long as our recording comes through and thank you all for your commitment to yourself your families our earth and in supporting others on this incredible time of evolution on our planet mm. Yeah, thank you for accepting.
this invitation and thank you for sharing. So, okay, I would like us to close our eyes again for just a moment and um, like take a deep breath. And as Julian would always say, like take what resonated with you from this meeting and then drop in the trash bin everything that didn't resonate and then put on an etheric shelf everything that is maybe so we can check it later and i would like to thank all the beings that gathered here today in the physical and non-physical and our bodies our sacred temples i want to thank for this time and for this opportunity to meet in a circle may our days be blessed and may we expand and connect with our joy and love thank you yeah <laughs> thank you aho chinkuya journey well everybody enjoy your day in the north and good night for those in the south and I look forward to meeting you wherever next our paths may meet.